Hello and a very warm welcome to the next episode of The Joy of Basing Essentials with me, Matt Sexwish. The last time I've showed you a brief overlook uh, on the brushes that I use and the general setup of my um, painting table when I paint miniatures. But this time I would like to show you a little bit uh, about the colors that I use and why I use them. So um, yeah, here you can see a setup of colors that um, is very, very basic for the way that I paint. Um, these colors are the ones that I use in nearly every uh, project that I paint. Um, and I would like to say that this is something like the, like the light and the, um, the shadow um, setup for like to create um, light and shadow generally on, on a lot of uh, projects. So as you can see already, I use uh, quite a, a different mix of uh, brands and manufacturers. Um, for me, it is very, very important to know uh, very well the qualities and the exact appearance of the color that I'm using. Um, it is not so important uh, what the name of the color is. It is more important to really to know how the color will dry out. And this is why um, I always put a little amount of the color on the lid of, uh, of, my, of my paint pots here. Um, that way I can really quickly see um, yeah, exactly how this color will uh, dry up uh, when, it's, um, when it's on the miniature after a while. So yeah, you can see that some of the colors, they are uh, pretty like glossy or like uh, satin, um, while others are more matte, uh, like this one here. Um, it's, it's very it's very good to have it uh, right on the lid or um, yeah here this ink for example this brown ink it has this uh, nice glossy shine to it so um, there are no more questions when you uh, when you see your colors and you have a lot of them and you're looking for a certain effect then you see right away what you will be getting uh, when you do it correctly mm. that being said it is very important to um, always mix <laughs> the color very very carefully that uh, you have um, in, in, in your pot and um, also it is uh, it is not very advisable to use color straight out of your pot this is why we have a wet palette that you can see over here um, I've also showed you a little bit how to um, quickly build a wet palette at home um, when you don't have one yet but um, uh, as a general rule of thumb it's good to take your paint pot shake it uh, very thoroughly and then, for example, take a little um, coffee <laughs> mixing stick like this one here. They're not very expensive. Um, you can either harvest them in your local, um, um, yeah, like coffee place, or you can just buy um, around thousand of them for like five bucks. But it's good to to really make sure that the color in your pot is is, is mixed, because in a um, pot like that usually you have uh, the pigment that um, yeah are the little particles that um, you would then that make the color appear the color that it has and a medium that kind of carries these uh, these pigments so these two they used to separate after time so it is really important to keep them to keep them mixed um, and also keep your um, hide, um, acrylic colors and nearly all of them that we use here are acrylics um, really it's really important to keep them uh, hydrated and uh, liquid because once they dry up um, there is uh, it, it's not so so great to to refresh them uh, using um, water or um, yeah, something like a more aggressive medium but once you are done with the with the mixing you can use um, like an old brush that you then use to yeah to take some color out of your pots and place them on your uh, wet palette like this. So um, as uh, explained before, these colors here are the ones that I uh, use for nearly every project. Um, it is important to have a black. Um, in this case, it's um, old chaos black. Um, this. Um, it's also a word of warning because some of the colors that I use are not available to buy um, freely anymore. They are out of production. But um, don't worry because as I explained before, it's uh, important to know the uh, properties of the color that you're using. So this, in this case, it's a very matte or a little bit satin uh, black, as you can maybe see here. And um, 
the P3, for example, has also a color which is called Tama Black, which has uh, very, very similar properties. Um, yeah, well, the thing is, when your favorite color goes out of production, um, most of the time um, that is when you have to look for a substitute. But um, this is why uh, we have also the painting community. So um, you can ask for advice and uh, see if you can find exactly the same um, tone with the same uh, properties that you are looking for. So we have also army painters, um, matte black is really, really close to the old chaos black. But as long as I have still some pots of chaos black, I, I try to use that. So a black as a, like the very, very, very deep um, shadow color. Then I have a scorch brown. Um, it's actually a little bit more um, satin or even shiny, this brown tone. It's a reddish brown, to brown tone. So... Um, yeah, this is really, really good to have some warm shadow, uh, shadow colors, like an umber color. Um, it's also good to dull down, for example, um, metallic paints. So when you uh, paint a gold or a silver and you want to, um, to dull it down uh, quickly uh, and uh, take away a little bit of its shine, uh, you can use um, some scotch brown for that. Then uh, we have some cream colors here. Um, uh, standard bleached bone, <laughs> which is like a a cream tone with a little bit um, like a gray impact in it um, not as bright as uh, not as uh, yeah not as bright as the uh, ivory from a uh, model color here um, but these two paints are important um, because this is like the most basic way how you can achieve a, a highlight is by adding a little bit yellow so not using a white straight away because that way your um, paint will might look chalky. Uh, it's important to to have a little bit yellow in uh, some of the tones. But also it is important to have uh, white. And for the whites, we use these two things here. Uh, one is the Academy uh, Acricolor Titan Weiss, Titanium White from Schminke. Um, and the other is uh, like a Moro White from P3. I used um, some Sky White from Games Workshop, but uh, it's out of out of production, so... <laughs> Yeah, just a very, very bright uh, white is really good. The difference between these two is that um, the, um, the Schminke here is very uh, pastoureuse. Uh, you know, it's, it's very thick. So um, when you compare it to the white here that we have on the palette, um, yeah, it holds, it holds like a volume much better. And this is actually great um, to have for certain techniques like the loaded brush technique um, that uh, yeah, we are showing you in... Uh, our painting um, tutorials so you need something that has actually this this like read a volume to it to form these little um, blobs at the end of your brush tip okay um, now further in the in the line we have a dark sea blue which is um, shadow color uh, it's a really really nice color because it's um, it's it's blue generally but there's also some green in it and it's it's pretty dark so um Dark sea blue is, is, is extremely useful to um, to yeah to add some some really nice uh, blue shade to um, to your shadows. Um, one word of warning: when you <laughs> use the model color uh, in these dropper uh, pots, I usually don't store them uh, like that, but I store them like like this. Um, it is a difficulty because the tip uh, doesn't allow that usually, but. Um, I think it's better because that way the heavy pigment sinks down here and is uh, right at the beginning of the of the dropper, so to say, when you uh, need it. Um, so that way um, I don't have the problem that I have uh, medium coming out when I um, when I start to add some color to my palette. Um, yeah, so so this is really really practical. Um, so yeah, Daxi blue. Um, then here we have a model air armor brown. Um, the armor brown is really, really great because it is more, um, yeah, like more glossy and more um, aggressive than um, the comparable Scotch brown. It dries out um, in a more glossy way, and this is uh, actually really great for um, to enhance the depth of the shadow areas when when we need that. So while the Scotch brown can really matte uh, surface down. The armor brown will add this a slight satin shine to it. So, so yeah, these two are really good, but this is the satin uh, version of it. 
Um, when you mix these two colors, the dark sea blue and the armor brown, you create something that um, comes close to uh, P3's umber, umber. Um, this tone here. I really like this tone because this is one of the most neutral colors that you can use to differentiate between two surfaces that are near one another. Um, in earlier times, people used um, black, which resulted in a like more cartoon looking um, black lined um, appearance. Um, and I think that uh, this umber tone, this umber umber is, is really ideal to use instead because it is not really brown, it is not really uh, black. It is something in between all of that, and it's just a it's really really great thing to um, yeah to separate um, surfaces from one another. And then we also use um, these two here. Um, this here is a army paint, a strong tone. Strong tone is really really great to um, to to also add something like a to that to. Uh, divide, so to say, two surfaces, um, and to add some some more contrast in just basically one step. Um, when this dries out, it will look like very yeah satin, so to say, and it is great for some of the techniques that we use for skin tones, for uh, monster skin, so to say. Um, yeah, so strong tone is, is is really recommended. And then <clears throat> last but not least, uh, brown ink. This is actually a color that is quite um, special. It is highly glossy when it dries out and it uh, has a lot of nuances and um, the way it behaves uh, is, is, is very, very interesting. You can see it maybe a little bit here, um, these little dots in here. Browning is, is, is extremely valu valuable <laughs> because it's also out of production. Um, the closest substitute that I found is actually from, um, from Winston Newton. It's this uh, nut brown here, um, which um, yeah, looks a little bit like that. Um, I think, no, actually this is a, a peat brown, but the brown inks from Winsor Newton are uh, colors that come closest to the brown ink. They are a little bit different still, but um, yeah, if you don't have uh, a brown ink, then I would recommend getting uh, some Winsor Newton ink. Okay, and... Um, yeah, so these colors here, they always go on my palette, um, also in a certain way when I when I paint. Um, so I don't put only one blob of some of the colors, but um, but a couple of them. This is um, because I I use um, the colors, uh, for example, to use um, no, I, I use that because I want to have some um, reservoir of medium tones. So when I mix colors uh, together, I have a couple of blobs that I can fall back onto. <laughs> That's not too confusing. So yeah, it's always good to have a couple of puddles. So for example, when I now paint a green, um, I mix it with this blob here and the other ones are still untouched, which is uh, quite good. The problem with this is that uh, they dry out um, even being on a wet palette, they can still dry out. Um, but yeah, as soon as the color loses the properties, um, after, I don't know, two hours of painting, I switch them anyways. If you are in a very hot um, area of the world, that might affect you a little bit more. But yeah, for, for Berlin here, where I am, um, that's not a big issue to, to leave color on your wet palette. Okay, and then um, whatever I want to mix, um, you know, all of the colors that are available, for example, there would be this red here. You can then um, take it in quickly. Also put quite an amount of that on my palette somewhere here. And then I can just scoop up some of the color and drag it downwards here. And that way I will have uh, already a gradient um, of tones on my palette that I can always use for painting. Okay, <clears throat> you can also yeah go even more extreme even with the white here, and then you have nearly the whole range from black to white on your palette that you can um, yeah use. Okay, um, yeah. Next up, I will show you some more specialized colors. So yeah, I have to rearrange everything for that. 
Okay, now we have a whole lot of more colors than we had before. And um, I have tried to group them in, uh, in different categories. So yeah, just let's just start and um, see what we can say about them. So for example, this here is, um, is a group of um, just very standard colors, uh, layer colors, I would say, something that just influences how the surface is, um, is perceived. They don't have uh, too much, they're not too shiny, not too, not too, um, too matte. And yeah, so these colors are just the ones that I can use then to mix up with uh, some light and some shadow, and they will then have this color that you can see here. Very standard stuff. Um, then here we have the uh, old uh, Citadel foundation colors. These here are um, more like highly pigmented. Um, so they will cover with uh, less layers. Um, and also the range that um, Games Workshop has chosen uh, for these colors was usually uh, quite uh, like pastel uh, colored, like not too saturated, a uh, little bit limited palette. And I really like some of them um, for for yeah, a lot of applications, like the stone color is really great. Um, also the, the Chardon granite uh, tone, which is also like this weird mix between gray, green, and um, maybe a little bit some brown. So yeah, I really, really like using them, but again, like these are out of production. Um, it is difficult to find substitutes for them, but um, yeah, actually I have I have actually found one, um, which is a little bit more obscure, but it's uh, these here, these Italieri paints. I really, really like them. Um, they are also very highly pigmented, and I think that they have the best, um, the best uh, lid um, that I've ever seen in a color because it's it's a little bit like a hybrid. So you can um, either screw this off and then uh, use the paint uh, like that, or you can just, yeah, remove this little cap. And it's a little like a, like a mixture of a drop uh, dropper bottle and um, a standard lid bottle. So these colors, I don't see how they will ever dry up because the, uh, the little... Um, uh, dropper here is completely encapsulated in this um, in this little part. So I have them for quite a, a while. I don't have much many of them, only I think six or so. But I think that they are extremely great for um, yeah for a lot of uh, applications. So I really like these. Um, then uh, also yeah the P3 range uh, that you can see here. Um, I really like these colors too. Um, they have a little bit more of a satin or sometimes even glossy finish to them. Um, so you might be able to see here when I um, turn them around, but um, I re like for for the way how I paint, um, this is very very useful. They also cover quite well with uh, just one go, and uh, the whole P3 range has um, actually not only um, the standard layer colors, but they also have these uh, these inks here. For example, this turquoise ink, uh, which is also pretty neat. Um, so yeah, I, I, I really like them uh, as they are high, like broadly available. Um, and I try to use them a lot. I also like the tones. Um, reminds me of the Old Games Workshop uh, range, so to say. Then, uh, speaking of which, the Old Games Workshop range, uh, these Citadel washes here, they are actually also out of production, but I find myself using that uh, whenever I can. The Devlin Mud here, for example, is also like the original... Um, the original strong tone. Um, it's it's very it's very similar to that, and um, a great color to just uh, add some some contrast without uh, adding any obnoxious uh, tone to it. Um, also, like this this red tone here, this bar red is, is great to just really quickly give a red influence without um, changing the 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 surface too much, the um, occlusion, so to say. So. I really like these, but uh, they are very difficult to get. Uh, I wish Case Workshop would continue this range uh, because I think it's it's uh, these are very very useful useful colors actually. Then we have uh, down here we have the metallics, um, metallics oh <laughs> not the yellow, but um, metallics are a um, topic uh, like by itself because um, although being um, acrylics uh, like these ones that we use. Um, they behave a little bit differently than, than other acrylic colors. They used to separate in a different way um, than uh, usually colors do. And uh, when they separate, they also um, they are much harder to, um, to uh, recycle or like to, to refresh. 
Um, so it's it's advisable to always use a fresh uh, metal tone when you when you're painting an important um, topic. Um, and I think that uh, the the old again like the old Games Workshop color, uh, golds. Um, some of the new ones too are quite useful, but um, but other than that, the P3, for example, blighted gold is a really fantastic uh, color. Um, it is yeah something between the bronze and um, and the gold. Really like this one. Uh, also, <laughs> this is one of the all time classics. It's the tin uh, tin bits from Games Workshop, also out of production. I've really failed to find a, a bronze tone like that with any other um, producer. I've not not seen that. Um, you know, even even the the P3, they 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 have this kind of molten bronze, which is more like a more like a copper. Um, it's it's still a bronze, but this is like the, the, the bronze uh, it gets, and you can use the tin bits um, for uh, as a foundation for gold for um, for uh, silver. So yeah, this is really something that I wish uh, would be available more uh, broadly. And then um, as for the highlight color, like what uh, you use as white uh, with regular colors is the chrome in uh, metallics. So um, the Model Air from Vallejo, these are extremely highly pigmented and they just give um, this final shine to the surface. So I think that this is just amazing. It's a little bit like the old Mi 3 Silver here, uh, but even brighter. So they have steel and uh, also chrome. And for the gold, you can also use this. Uh, it's actually really beaten, but uh, there's also a tone for that, which gives uh, the gold also like a little um, silver shine to it. So, um, so yeah, these here are really useful um, as well but again like uh, keep in mind that when you use metal pigments um, you have to to keep your order of your um, of your water containers very um, carefully because you don't want to have metal pigments in your non-metal pigment color okay here we have some uh, some inks uh, inks are very useful to to add like this absolute dramatic gloss um, to certain areas. I see that a lot of people use it just um, in the wrong way because they just um, dip <laughs> the miniature or use it like too, um, way too generously. Um, an ink is, is like a extremely, extremely glossy um, finish. And so I think that this is best in the very darkest parts. If you have a black, you can't go more black than just black. Um, but with a gloss, you can because you will add some, some, uh, some, with the ink, you, you can because you will add some gloss uh, finish to it uh, to even the darkest um, surface. Uh, also comes from P3 with these uh, these inks. They are quite good. They have also a higher volume to them than uh, these old inks, so they are a little more. They will stick more to the to the surface and uh, create more like shiny artifacts. Then uh, we have these colors here from Scale uh, Scale Color. Um, and from uh, Reaper Master Series paint. Uh, these are extremely matte. So I'm not sure if you can if you can see that, but they are they just don't have any shine to them. And um, a lot of pro painters really like that because they want to paint all of the light that is on the miniature themselves. So they want to say exactly where the shine is. Um, it's, it differs from the way I paint. Um, I really like to use the properties of the colors that I use. So when they when I need a shine, I just use a shiny color uh, or a gloss uh, the same way. But yeah, this is um, this is something that is they are also very highly pigmented. Um, these Reaper paints, and um, you can really achieve crazy results. Uh, Kirill, for example, Kirill Kanai, yellow one is using this uh, quite a lot, and um, a lot of the Spanish pro painters use the scale color. Um, they are amazing amazing colors also okay for um opla, for a satin um shine or like for a, like a tint i use these vallejo model wash uh, colors here um especially the dark yellow the dark brown ones for bases um, also the big pots comes in really handy and also this dark green um where needed um, these are really really great to add some yeah some some tint of like a Although this is called yellow, actually it's a, it's, it looks very green. And um, these three actually are the ones that I would recommend. 
Then um, we have some yeah, neon colors. Uh, these here are from my friend uh, Rafa uh, Pika from Forge Monkey. I'm not sure if he still um, has them available. Um, they are um, they have their like day glow uh, colors. So you can see that if you compare it to yellow, they they start to like they they really give this extra um, this extra yellow to um, yeah to to your to your color. Um, they they behave a little bit erratically sometimes, like they used to separate. Uh, they they sometimes separate, and it looks a little bit like marker fluid, uh, you know, when you have these markers um, for paper. But uh, you can achieve amazing results with that, as Roman uh, Lapard also has uh, proven with some of uh, his projects. Um, so yeah, these are really useful too. Then there are some colors that are technically uh, not colors, which is uh, here, um, but they are still. Um, needed so we have some satin varnish that i also use a lot for airbrushing um some gloss varnish which actually has also seen some better days um this here is um actually some uh realistic water effect so also high gloss and here we have some white glaze so um these colors here together with these uh, tamiya colors here and uh, the x22 clear and the uh, x27 clear red are special colors um, used for blood or like water effects or rain um, but they still yeah they are very useful to have similar uh, when it comes to pigments um, these pigments here are just um, artist pigments um, there are a lot of uh, different manufacturers uh, Forge World has a whole range of pigments too um, yeah but or uh, AK also has, has a lot of them um, you can use that either to um, to include in resin to simulate something like plankton, or you can um, really use that um, this, for example, to to create a very dusty look um, on your um, vehicles, on on boots to simulate dust, something like that. So it's really good. But you need to uh, also secure the color uh, the the pigment after you put it on, um, otherwise it will just um, stay. Um, yeah stay in this uh, form and um, just like rub off after time. <clears throat> okay, um, yeah, here we have also some special colors, um, effect colors, I would say. Um, this is like a rust effect, uh, really useful. Um, you can see it in uh, an old uh, video that I've uh, done on a Cigna Warjack um, a while ago for Painting Buddha. Um, and these colors, they, they, they have different um, properties. Uh, some react, uh, behave like rust, others like moss. And um, yeah, actually, these true earth colors are also great. I'm not sure if they're still available, but um, they are also colors that oxidate or um, change um, the properties of metal. So mm, really, really useful. Um, yeah, well, another ink. And um, last but not least, also these um, uh, style <laughs> res. Um, and uh, miniature, I think it's here, Minitaire uh, airbrush ready colors. They are great to um, to really prime something with a deep uh, black. I've not even opened this one, but um, when you need to prime your miniatures, you can uh, consider using um, these colors in your airbrush, and you will have the the, the most set in black that you can imagine with these. Okay, that's it. Um, yeah, I hope that you got a nice overview uh, over the colors that I use and um, that you find this useful. Um, yeah, please uh, leave a like if you like what you saw here. Um, also subscribe to this channel. Uh, thank you very much and uh, hope to see some of your projects very soon. Goodbye.